Hello and welcome to the talk about the project GeoKW, where we optimize the thermal use of groundwater for decentralized heating and cooling supply in the city of Munich with the help of Precise. So what is thermal use of groundwater? It is actually a kind of shallow geothermal energy where you utilize the year-round moderate temperatures for heating with a heat pump or direct cooling. So a groundwater heat pump commonly consists of a heat pump itself and an abstraction and an injection well. From the abstraction well, groundwater is pumped towards the heat pump where energy is extracted and that means that the water is cooled down. The cooled down water will be re-injected into the same aquifer in the injection well and so the water balance in the aquifer stays the same. At the injection well, a cold plume develops where it normally dissipates down, downstream following the natural groundwater flow direction. But however, there are two situations that should be avoided. And one is uh, if you overexploit your site and the cold water is dragged towards the abstraction well again, um, where it's pumped into the heat pump, then a cycle is formed. And by that, the temperature in the heat pump will steadily decrease and therefore also the efficiency will decrease. The other unfavorable situation would be that the cold plume that flows downstream reaches another abstraction well of a groundwater heat pump and decreases the efficiency of that system. So this has to be avoided and actually if you want to install a new system you have to prove that no existing downstream systems are affected in a negative way. So why are we focusing on that topic especially in Munich? That is because Munich has favorable hydrogeological conditions and that means a productive shallow aquifer where the groundwater table commonly lies in depth of two to five meters. So you don't have to drill very deep to install new wells and so also installation costs will be low. In addition, uh, the quaternary gravel has a high hydraulic conductivity and so a lot of groundwater can be pumped since gravel deposits have a high porosity. And last but not least, um, also, the aquifer th uh, thickness is sufficient in most areas, as you can see on the map to the right. Um, and it can also be quite variable. So the white areas at the map indicate that there is no groundwater in the quaternary gravels. Um, but uh, on the other side, Munich has uh, large quaternary uh, channels uh, where a lot of groundwater uh, lies and uh, where large systems for thermal use of groundwater could be supplied. So if you ask yourself the questions where to install new groundwater heat pumps, it is cru crucial to know about those hydraulic conditions and the varying potential for the thermal use. Further, also the thermal conditions are quite good as the groundwater temperature in Munich is quite high. And those are conditions that you normally don't want to have uh, in an aquifer, but as Munich is a large city, uh, its subsurface also suffers from the urban heat island effect and the groundwater temperatures um, steadily rise towards the city center. Elevated uh, groundwater can temperatures can increase the growth of uh, bacteria and microbes and that would decrease the water quality and so uh, mitigation of this anthropogenic heating would assure drinking water quality uh, of this aquifer in the future as well. So and on the other hand, um, high groundwater temperatures increase the efficiency of uh, groundwater heat pumps. And as groundwater heat pumps also cool down the water, they can contribute to a thermal remediation of this aquifer. And since the conditions are quite good in Munich, already a lot of systems are installed in the city. With over 2,600 registered users, you can see on the map that most do heating. Um, however, from the numbers on the left, you see that about three quarters of the water that is pumped is used in few large systems for cooling uh, compared to heating. So we have a positive heat budget in the aquifer. Um, and so more heat is injected than abstracted um, and the further diffusion of groundwater heat pump uh, would balance the heat budget here also in the future. So if we could reach uh, a negative heat budget in the aquifer, we would be able to install uh, further cooling systems as well and thereby use the groundwater as a kind of thermal storage. 
Well, that brings us to our optimization problem and the central question of the project, which is how many heat pumps can be installed in Munich. And that is not meant in a sense that we want to install as many heat pumps as possible, but how many could be installed with a consideration of the current energy system infrastructure in Munich. And when installing new heat pumps, of course, they underlie several constraints. Some of them already have been mentioned. Of course, uh, the heat pump should be able to operate sustainably. Therefore, in the extraction well, no severe drawdown of the groundwater table should be present. And in injection well, no groundwater ta table rise or flooding over the ground surface into basements should occur. Within the systems, as we heard, we don't want to have thermal recycling. And the system, of course, should work within water protection law, which is, includes no negative interference uh, with downstream systems. And in addition, since we have heating and cooling usage, systems uh, should use synergies um, of surrounding ones. For example, groundwater heat pumps should be installed within warm plumes of cooling systems um, for increased efficiency. And when we start the optimization, we define two optimization scenarios. And one is that we want to minimize the economic cost for heating and cooling uh, citywide. And the other is that we want to minimize the greenhouse gas emissions in the city. And to solve this optimization problem, we obviously have to simulate the groundwater uh, heat pumps. And therefore, we have to simulate flow and heat transfer in the subsurface. And um, for this, we use uh, PFLOTRAN, which is an open source and a highly parallel finite volume solver. And in order to integrate the groundwater simulations into the current energy system um, in Munich, we need a model um, of the current energy system. And this is modeled using a software called WURPS. WURPS is developed by our partners at the Chair of Renewable and Sustainable Energy Systems, also at the Technical University in Munich. And OOPS is a linear um, uh, programming optimization model, uh, which was originally built for capacity expansion planning for distributed energy systems. And of course, we have to couple those two codes um, uh, using precise. Um, so the optimizer knows um, the groundwater temperatures and can decide where to install new heat pumps that can work efficiently. And then it communicates back to PFLOTRAN the flow rates and the temperatures of the heat pump uh, wells, uh, which simulates uh, their thermal and hydraulic impact in the aquifer. And now I introduce our conceptual approach for the groundwater modeling. Here you can see a simplified box model of the main geometrical features that we integrate into the model. And uh, first we have the quaternary um, layer where our main interest lies. Within this quaternary layer, we of course have the wells. Um, so the water columns of the well screens, um, but we also have surface lakes that make a thermal and hydraulic uh, impact in the aquifer because they interact with the groundwater. And um, we also have uh, subsurface infrastructures like metro tunnels and large sewers as they can obstruct the natural groundwater flow and therefore also hydraulically impact the flow. In addition to the uh, quaternary layer, we also simulate uh, the layer underneath the gravels, which is the tertiary layer. And the tertiary layer consists of mainly sands, uh, silt and clay sediments, which are less conductive and therefore confine the quaternary aquifer to the bottom but um, they play a, a role in the heat transfer and therefore also have to be considered. And since we um, also integrate the unsaturated zone, we can apply the surface uh, temperature at the top boundary of the model. And this is important because the aquifer is very shallow and it is affected uh, by the seasonal temperature change um, from the surface, which also renews the thermal resource in the underground. So with this conceptual approach, we can start meshing and we start by a normal de Launy mesh. And here you can see a surface mesh uh, as we have it in the city and the mesh integrates all the introduced geometrical features like wells. Afterwards, we convert the triangulated mesh into its uh, Voronoi dual since PFLOTRAN uses a finite volume discretization and requires an orthogonal mesh to be accurate. 
And now we come to the energy system modeling, which is performed by our linear optimizer URBS, which can be adapted to multiple scales um, from single households where we use it, uh, but also to neighborhoods or countries. URBS minimizes uh, the cost uh, zeta here in this objective function. And it is built that it always satisfies the given demand of the system, such as electrical supply or heating and cooling demand of buildings in our case. So given a certain amount of resources, which we have here as solar um, or groundwater temperature, it can use those uh, resources as commodities um, in the objective function to convert the resource into the supply and does this by different processes. So um, given here as process variables, which can be solar panels, for example, that uh, convert uh, solar radiation into um, electric power, or in our case, heat pumps um, that convert the energy stored in groundwater into heat or for direct cooling, also without a heat pump uh, to supply a cooling, heat, cooling demand. Whoops, does that um, also accounting for the constraints that I mentioned before. So in our case, for temperature limits, uh, extraction and injection limits uh, of the groundwater um, so that it never exceeds the availability of the resource. And the cost here can be um, economic cost, um, as I mentioned before, or ecologic cost in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, where we add a certain carbon cost to each process. So for the optimization self, itself, uh, Oops has to know which temperatures are pumped at the potential extraction wells in order to calculate heat pump efficiencies. Um, but Oops also performs the constraint checking and for that it additionally needs to know uh, the drawdown and groundwater rise at potential extraction and injection wells. So if a certain heat pump location is efficient and suitable, the groundwater simulation on the other side needs to know which temperature gets into the aquifer from uh, the injection well and uh, which pump rates are applied at the extraction and injection. The benefits of directly using precise here to perform less coupling is the parallel data communication between the solvers and the data mapping. So the parallel data communication is important as we utilize many independent OOPS models decomposed on many parallel ranks. So the information for the heat pump does not sit on one processor only. And in addition, pFlowTran also runs in parallel and locations where we need to extract the data from the domain uh, is initially unknown. So with the help of Precise's point-to-point -point communication, we do not have to manually set up communication between the solvers or write all information to the master rank uh, of each solver. An interesting aspect of our coupling approach is that we need uh, information from various spatial coordinates as each heat pump in the system has its own coordinates. And in addition, we need information about the entire time and not just within one time step because OOPS performs the optimization over the length of the whole simulation time, um, so the whole pflow flow simulation, which could spread uh, a period of one to 10 years. And therefore, um, we treat this time coordinate as another spatial dimension in precise. Uh, therefore, when creating the coupling interface mesh uh, in each solver adapter, we create a list of all spatial coordinates first and then essentially multiply them by the number of time steps that we need to exchange uh, the data between the solvers. Uh, an example of those uh, vertex coordinates um, for a heat pump is given here. So uh, those uh, two coordinates um, uh, could be uh, two independent vertices on the coupling mesh. And by using the nearest neighbor mesh mapping, precise maps the data at the, uh, this uh, one location um, to the correct uh, vertex in the opposite solver. And we are able to correctly extract information that we need at each physical location in space, uh, but also in time. So here we can see the overview of our coupling scheme. 
It starts by creating uh, the coupling interfaces in the two adapters and the initialization, initialization of the coupling with uh, Precise. Um, Precise then overrides the boundary conditions and pfloatrun and OOPS can run. And uh, then the previously introduced variables will be exchanged and written uh, to Precise, uh, which continues with uh, Precise Advance. And another interesting way that we use uh, Precise is the time stepping. So we use implicit coupling and at uh, the start of each uh, time steps, URPS uh, will select the heat pump uh, to add into the model. And um, um, then we iterate uh, using this heat pump uh, in pfloatrun until the thermal field has converged which means that we use a quasi-steady state. And once convergence is, is reached at the end of uh, the time step, we are able to check the constraints in OOPS and terminate if uh, the newly added heat pump um, should uh, yeah, remain and add it to the list of permanent heat pumps or it, if it should be removed. Here you can see a small groundwater model, which integrates uh, the features relevant for the coupling procedure. And uh, we have uh, hypothetical heat pumps, each with one extraction and one injection well that are part of the optimization. And in addition, we have existing thermal uses um, that uh, uh, represent the current situation. And last but not least, we have culvert systems. Culvert systems um, are used to guide water from the upstream side of a subsurface infrastructure to the downstream side um, so that the infrastructure does not act as a barrier for the natural groundwater flow. As mentioned before, we have to decompose the OOPS models in order to parallelize the optimization. Um, here we have four small OOPS models uh, with two models running on each processor and um, we only run one OOPS model at a time on each processor and these alternate between time steps um, and therefore no processor remains idle and we can avoid um, interaction between these models close to each other. Um, in this uh, model the groundwater flow flows from the bottom here to the top and um, therefore we can run model A and model C in parallel and then alternate to model B and model D. Since the model boundaries of A to C or uh, B to D are cut along the streamline of the groundwater flow, there is only little thermal interaction and they can run in parallel without um, significant thermal interference. So for the whole of Munich, uh, even the groundwater models uh, would be too big and we also had to decompose them according to the natural groundwater flow direction. Uh, here you can see how we decomposed the city into uh, 31 pfloatron models and also uh, you can see the considered uh, subsurface infrastructures uh, where the culvert systems are connected to. Uh, to the right, you can see how the OOPS models are further clustered in order to avoid thermal interference and to speed up uh, the optimization process. And this clustering of OOPS models is performed within each um, p flowtron or within each groundwater model. So now we come back to our small test model and take a look at the optimization uh, solution and uh, the development of the thermal field after the last iteration. Um, so here you can see the thermal field after uh, 10 days, after 100 days and after 230 days. And the yellow cycles indicate the heat pumps that have been added by the optimization process. So after 100 days, uh, the cold plumes have uh, reached their maximum. And I, at day uh, 230, uh, we already have summertime and several existing systems uh, switched uh, into cooling mode. Um, so uh, warm the groundwater. And um, uh, at least two, those two uh, of the newly installed systems uh, will benefit from that in next uh, winter's heating period. 
Um, so here, in addition, you can see a comparison between uh, two hypothetical loads that we have applied. So um, on the left side, you see the simulation that I've shown before. And uh, we have high loads, uh, which uh, foster a negative thermal interaction with existing systems. And um, on the right, you see the regular loads um, where the cold plumes are smaller and uh, five more heat pumps actually uh, uh, could be uh, could be added um, uh, in the optimized solution. So the constraint checking actually works. And we have uh, successfully implemented uh, this uh, coupling procedure and are currently busy with the preparation of the citywide models. The citywide groundwater simulations and the optimization um, will lead to a lot of valuable data. On the one side, information about the current groundwater situation from the hydro hydraulically and thermally calibrated groundwater models, and on the other side, from the optimization results on the potential thermal use. This is information that we wanted to make easily accessible and easy to work with. And so we also developed a web app within the project that contains a download uh, option for spatial data sets as seen here. Uh, you can draw a rectangle and export the relevant data sets in order to work with the data or use the information in smaller specific groundwater models. We also visualize all time series data sets that we used as input to our calibrations, such as groundwater level or temperature time series, and also the loads of the thermal uses. And as a last functionality, we provide an online tool for initial feasibility studies, where you can use our calibrated thermal field of the current situation in Munich to plan small systems. And uh, within the web app, the thermal plume is calculated analytically based on user supplied loads and uh, then interference with downstream systems or interference with the planned system is checked. So with the web app, we hope that the results will have a long lasting impact and uh, will benefit uh, the further diffusion of groundwater heat pumps in Munich. So thank you very much for your attention.